Hello, welcome to WWE Monday Night Raw Review for the 2nd of November 2020. I'm joined by Wrestling Network. How are you doing today, man? Tom, Tommy, Thomas, I figured it out. What? I figured out who is the better channel between you and I. Who? It's you. How did you figure this one out? You want to know why? Because when it got to hour two of Monday Night Raw, I broke. I Honestly, I salute you for being able to sit through the last hour of this without breaking. Dude, I was sat there literally in tears. You can go back and watch my stream. I mean genuine tears. Yeah, I got Genuine to tears. I got told that. I, I don't know how you sat through that and actually kept a straight face. I was ready to die. I don't know. I, I just ready to die. I mentally block out anything with Raw anymore. Looking. Let's tear this thing apart. It was some shit, but anyway, let's get into it because I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. Randy Orton came out and caught a typical Randy Orton promo. Blah, 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 blah. I'm better than everybody. Blah, 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 blah. I'm the champion. Alexa Bliss then interrupts and is like, got, I think it was play and something else on her gloves. I can't remember what the other thing was on. Play and pain. Play yes, and pain. That was really good. And then McIntyre, Claymore, Drew. Then Miz tried to cash in and then. McIntyre stopped him. It was kind of pointless. I mean, the sad thing is, this was probably one of the highlights of the show. That's saying something. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the highlights of the show, and trust me, people, it only goes downhill from here. If you think that's impossible, yeah, all you have to do is listen for the next five minutes. I'm about to tell you why. Yes. Then, just to wrap this up, Miz and Morrison will be facing Drew in a two-on-one handicap match in the main event of Monday Night Raw. Because we all care. Oh, we all care. We went from Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock and The Undertaker and Mankind and Triple H and great main events. And even in the Ruthless Aggression, Cena had some great main events, as much as I hate the motherfucker, to Drew McIntyre versus The Miz and John Morrison. Yep. Fucking... Why are we having this shit? Morrison has done absolutely nothing useful since he's come back. The Miz has been freaking watered down and destroyed since 2016. And McIntyre is getting very stale now. He's that is uh, on the same gimmick since the beginning of this year. And it's gotten boring now. I wouldn't stay I wouldn't say stale. More like just, it's been hammered and hammered and hammered to the point where it's just, it's boring now. Drew McIntyre's lost his belt, which was really the only thing that's been defining him as a legitimate single star throughout the year. He beat Brock Lesnar, but aside from that, the belt has made Drew McIntyre this year. He lost it, and now what really is Drew McIntyre? A wise he bitch do? going after his championship again. Exactly. And it, I, I'm... I've never understood in wrestling why they do, like, why would Drew McIntyre want to prevent The Miz from winning the championship? Surely, if The Miz wins the championship, he's perceived as a weaker challenge than Randy Orton. So, surely if Drew McIntyre wants the belt back, he's going to want Miz to be the champion. Yeah, but no, that doesn't make wrestling logic. D well, not wrestling logic, WWE logic. We all know who's behind it. Okay. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. The 75-year-old genius, supposed genius. stopped being able to write decent segments about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but half yeah. the good stuff comes from writers and Triple H and that. I don't think Vince has had a decent idea. Or if, well, he did cancel Raw Underground, so he actually does have oh, some self-awareness. Yeah, that, that's in the past. Um, I still have memories and flashbacks and nightmares yes. about Raw Underground. Alright, let's move on to probably one of the shittest rivalries on Monday Night Raw. Elias and Jeff Hardy. Why do we care? Oh, Jeff Jeff didn't hit him with a car, but Elias thinks he's hitting with a car. First off, Elias, why do you give a shit now? You've just become number one selling your album. Well, I say selling. They, he only became number one because they gave the album away for free. <laughs> it, was, it was free. It was That's free? <laughs> Yeah, it was free on Apple Music. That's why it shot into the number one charts. Because they gave it oh. away. 
they don't make it seem like that as well. They'll tell you, oh, Elias's album is now number one on iTunes, and it seems impressive. And that's the first time I found out that it was free. Yeah, kind of it seems a bit eh, not so much impressive anymore. The first anymore. twelve hours, it was free. You, uh, how much is it now? I don't even know. I've not bothered looking, but I mean, Elias is not a bad singer, so it's probably worth whatever the charging. Yeah, he's decent. Yeah. Then we had a Vince Russo style match of Katara and the Pole. Why the fuck did they take a Vince Russo idea for this? Sorry, Tom, you didn't do that enough justice. Can you please repeat? People who people who are watching this probably didn't watch Raw tonight. They're they're watching you for their information of what happened on Raw. Repeat that match stipulation. We had a fucking Qatar on a pole match in 2020. On a pole matches became irrelevant in fucking 1997. It was shit. And Hardy won because reasons. Just, just hang on. Just, just allow that stipulation to sink into your pause. Yes, we had a guitar on a pole. On a pole, the objective to get the guitar off the pole and then hit somebody with it. Somewhere, Vince Russo has creamed his pants, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, more than somewhere, you do Vince Christmas is having Vince Christmas. Vince Russo is having a white Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and unfortunately, it's not fucking snow. Yeah, it's not uh, crack either. Uh, Even uh, that's what the fucking writers of this show are smoking, apparently. Well, yeah, why are we t- focusing on Jeff Hardy's actual real-life drug problems and alcohol problems in a storyline? He is legit have been addicted to alcohol and drugs. Why are we making this a storyline? And, and, and another thing, right? Me and Tom both wear glasses, but didn't they say a couple weeks ago that the culprit was pale white with red hair. I'm yeah. not sure if Jeff Hardy has <laughs> has red hair. No. Not so for 20 Elias years. should have figured out it wasn't fucking Jeff Hardy quite quickly when the, the police didn't fucking arrest, didn't actually charge him with anything because it wasn't him. Because like he was got sober. by Elmo. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ with this crap. Then we go to possibly the worst match on the entire card. Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose. Why the fuck are they a team? Oh, wait, because they're blonde and have big tits. I think Vince thinks it's the Attitude Era again. Versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax for the women's tag titles. They retain. Who cares? Yeah, I I don't give a fuck, really. Lana got put through a table at the end of the match. That was the highlight of it. Yes, I'm finding the Lana going through the table is quite entertaining, actually. It is. It's like the Undertaker's streak at this point. As soon as Lana doesn't get put through a table on a Monday Night Raw, that's when you start to cry, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Lana needs to go through a table every single week, including pay-per-views. 100%. 101%. Yes. I mean... Why Dana's not a good wrestler. Mandy Rose is a subpar wrestler at best, and Nia Jax is fucking Nia Jax. The only decent actual woman wrestler in there that could kind of wrestle is Shayna Baszler. And yeah, even she's it, not that good. She's not that good. But why do they continuously book Nia every single time that she's in the ring with somebody? She either hurts them or at least does something negative yeah. to not. She gets nobody over. She has no idea what she's doing in the ring. She's unsafe. She's untrained. She's just bad. And even on the mic, I could justify it if it was kind of like a Hulk Hogan situation where she could talk, but maybe she wasn't the best in the ring. But it's not. She's just overall bad. It's like a shit sandwich without the bread. Just shit on top of shit on top of shit. Yep. My God, her promo skills are awful. Her voice is annoying as well. Yep. I can't stand Nia Jax. Yeah. Makes two of us. Then, for some reason, next match we have is R-Truth versus Bobby Lashley. Champion versus champion match. Why are we pretending like the 24-7 championship is actually a legitimate championship? It's not exactly on the calibre of the fucking champ- the US championship, is it? Oh, I, I disagree. Oh yeah, it's better than it because R-Truth is actually funny. 
okay, not because of that, but if you think about it, all time great matches, you have Stone Cold and The Rock, Hogan and Macho Man, Cena and Orton, R Truth and Bobby Lashley. It, it holds up. Hmm. It holds up. Lashley won. And then. <laughs> then Lashley, for some reason, attacks Drew Gulak when he tries to pin R Truth and then puts Gulak on top of R Truth so he wins the title. Why? Yeah, why did he attack him just to give him the championship anyway? What what was the point? To prove he's big and strong? There was no point of the entire segment. Trying to digest one part of the segment and dissect it and understand it isn't going to happen because there was really no point of them, either three of the men, being out there. Hmm. Just felt so pointed. It was a filler segment is what it was. Yeah. lasted for like five minutes. It got some TV time, whatever. And our truth wasn't even funny this time because he didn't really get to say anything. Our truth is our the truth only thing that makes funny. Our truth is kind of funny. I mean, no. Compared to everything else on this show, our truth is a golden freaking chalice compared to the shit everything else is. Yeah, see, it, I don't know. It, it's corny. It's corny humor that has no place in wrestling. Yeah, it just but seemed, neither does any of the I segments happening tonight. I don't understand it. When, when you go from Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton, this blood feud, and they're being serious, and then you go to our truth showing his ass, how do I take anything else on this program seriously? It's WWE, you can't. WWE True. stopped being serious fucking years ago. True. Uh, then we go to AJ Styles declaring that he is the raw captain and that he wants to make room for more people, so... They have a long, boring talking segment leading to uh, Keith Lee versus Braun Strowman versus Sheamus. If Braun wins, he is on Team Raw for Survivor Series. Braun Strowman won. I mean, first of all, actually admitting that you are the team captain of Raw is much similar and much akin to actually admitting that you're the owner of Nambla. I wouldn't want to admit that in public, for one. Nope. Two to what was the implication of this match again I really wasn't paying attention at this point uh, if Braun Strowman won he got to be on Team Raw for Survivor Series like because so, why, why does Braun care yeah Braun Strowman's supposed to be a solo entity a monster who is in for business and in for himself why, why does he give a fuck why does he care about being on the Raw Survivor Series team against Smackdown and, and leading the team into victory this is exactly the reason why no one cared when Braun Strowman won the Universal Championship because he's shit now. He stopped being irrelevant in 20 fucking 18. Yeah, they missed a chance with him. And then he shaved his hair as well. Why would you he shave your hair? He just looked like the Big Show. He literally looked like a rip off Big Show. Oh, he looks like an oversized gnome, man. Oversized he looks awful. garden gnome. <laughs> Seriously, Braun Strowman, sort your shit out. Grow your hair back and stop wearing that fucking gym shirt as well. Nipples poke through it, and then the, I think there was a brawl after the match. But at this point, I just stopped caring. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, then we had a Firefly Funhouse match. Five, sorry, Firefly Funhouse segment. Usual Bray Randy, usual Bray stuff in the Firefly Funhouse with Alexa. It was. The most entertaining thing on the show because I actually like the Firefly Funhouse stuff. I mean, if that's the kind of thing you're into, it's the kind of thing you're into. Personally, Dude, we I just don't saw care. freaking Braun Strowman and Sheamus and other shit that we didn't care about. So this was like this was amazing. I actually do like Bray in the Firefly Funhouse. I just I like this creepy edge it has to it. It's a good segment in my opinion. I mean, it, well, yeah. When you think about it, if you Followed up the Braun Strowman stuff with Katie Vick. That's going to look like the Stone Cold beer truck segment. Anything's going to look good following that segment. But still, the Firefly Funhouse to me, it's just so over dramatic and overacted and corny. But it's, it, it's, it's got meant to be over dramatic. And uh, yeah, but at least with it not being like in the ring, it 
doesn't take away from what it does feel like it's a separate entity that's what backstage segments feel like I understand what you mean it's just I don't know I don't know how to explain it it's just Bray Wyatt's calling is not as a wrestler for me he should be an actor he's he definitely be a very actor. successful actor I mean I'm assuming you know what Mr. Rogers is yes that's basically what that Firefly Funhouse is is him trying to be like a Mr. Rogers style character Oh, and by the way, what was that that came out of Alexa Bliss's mouth at the end? It looked like a fucking period blood clot. What was that? I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Anyway, that the yeah. Then we had, for some reason, Lana versus Nia Jax. Nia Jax won and kicked off Lana off the Survivor Series team. I have no words to the disdain I have for that segment. Why the fuck do we need to see Nia Jax wrestle twice in one night? <laughs> it just gets worse. It's like a roller coaster in reverse. Like, first of all, you go up and then you just come crashing down. For the rest of the night, you just keep going down and down and down. And eventually, you just get sick of it. You get sick of it. And I was sick of it by this point. We don't need to see Nia Jax over and over and over and over again. And they're pushing her. And I will never understand. It's only because she's The Rock's cousin. Would I Nia so. Jax be getting I this treatment if so. she wasn't The Rock's cousin? She wouldn't. Fucking hell. She wouldn't. They need to just get rid of her. They do. I don't, I don't like Nia Jax. I really couldn't care for Lana. Lana is modern day Sable. Yeah, but with less wrestling ability. Exactly. Somehow, less wrestling ability. Sable didn't have fuck all to begin with. And <laughs> no, Lana somehow made it worse. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't understand how they think we're going to care by putting two people that we don't already care about to begin with in a match. Two wrongs do not make a right. No, they do not. They definitely don't. Then we go to a fun VIP lounge where the talking about they want a challenge for the tag titles and then New Day come out and start rambling and then for some reason we have to have a match between Cedric Alexander Sean Benjamin facing the New Day in a non-title match which they the Hurt Business won great I don't care the Hurt Business are oh shit they're not entertaining MVP is probably the highlight of the group because MVP is a great talker I can't deny that MVP is great at promos but MVP's Cedric great. Alexander and Sean Benjamin just feel like they're there for no reason. Uh, I mean, for one, why did they start this match off as if it was a surprise? They announced this match on WWE.com an hour before the show. They said it was going to happen. I was waiting for him to come out. Literally said, oh, when's New Day coming out? Lo and behold, the New Day and everybody acted like it was a surprise. Like we weren't expecting it. It's so dumb. They have no idea what they're doing. The format of this show is just all over the place. All over yeah. the place. Yeah, let, let's just save our anger for the next segment. First off, Nikki Cross tried to confront Alexa about ignoring her, blah, blah, blah. And she turned Alexa across and around and she had really creepy eyes. It was actually vaguely entertaining. Especially after the drizzle we had before and the drizzle we had after. In hindsight, it's actually quite entertaining. I like Alexa with the creepy shit. It's entertaining, at least. I mean, wow. we don't watch this show for the decent quality wrestling, so we might as well watch it for the entertainment factor. Wow, contact lenses. Was I supposed to be scared? No, was but at least it was be better shaking? than watching the Hurt Business drone on about wanting to win the tag team titles. Oh my god, in that match as well, man. Oh my god, it went on forever. Yeah. Went uh, on forever. Speaking of matches that went on forever, this one didn't. We had a SmackDown wrestler on Raw for some fucking reason, a ricochet faced Tucker. Tucker is on Mon on Friday Night SmackDown. Why the fuck is he on Monday Night Raw? Wait, I thought he was drafted to Raw, no? I thought, no, because... Otis, I thought Otis went to Raw with Ms. Morrison. Oh, yeah. And then Tucker stayed on SmackDown. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Actually, I heard that that was a mistake. They didn't actually mean to draft Tucker to SmackDown. He just got the graphic wrong. So he's still on Raw. Or he got drafted to Raw, sorry. Oh, 
Okay, anyway. Fucking WWE. Ali beat him in like five seconds and then the fucking retribution attacked. What, uh, what, what was this match? Was it Ricochet versus... Tucker for some... For Tucker literally level. no reason. There was no reason for this match to exist. And then shitty retribution attacked. Yeah, what was Tucker wearing, by the way? He looked I, like fat Sami Zayn. I don't know, but he looked fucking awful. <laughs> he looked like a 90s jobber. Yeah. But you could see Dino Bravo versus Tucker. Yeah. This match Hot was garbage. awful. The segment was awful. Retribution is awful. Retribution is basically Nexus if you make them un uninteresting. At least Net yeah. Nexus has some good personalities in it. It's like Nexus without Wade Barrett. Yeah, but I still don't get their logic. We want to destroy the establishment of WWE because you're all getting paid shitloads of money to wrestle, but we'll sign WWE contracts. You made your point invalid the second you signed a fucking wrestling contract and then complained about people signing wrestling contracts. <laughs> it's like I said, I hate money, but then going to get a job. You just got to accept it, man. It's WWE it's logic. Stupid. Anything from two weeks ago doesn't count. It's fucking stupid. Last week, last week, whatever happened counts. This week, whatever happened counts. But two weeks ago, a race from history doesn't count. That's WWE booking for you. The two-week rule. We're not stupid, WWE. We don't have short-term memory loss. We remember shit. I remember when Rey Mysterio lost his championship to John Cena after winning it an hour before, back in the day. Oh yeah, fuck Cena for that one as well. Yeah, that was a dick move by Cena. But anyway, let's just get through the rest of this bullshit. The main event happened. McIntyre, Miz and Morrison. The match was vaguely entertaining. Vaguely entertaining? Are you serious? Well, we just did have literally Ricochet versus Tucker, so... I... I I am lost for words. <laughs> I mean, anything would be better than Ricochet and Tucker. Uh, I don't know. This main event sucked the life out of me. And it went on yeah. for so long as oh, well. Yeah, it did feel so long. But yeah, by vaguely I'd say I meant compared to what it was happened before. But no, it was shit. Um, Randy Orton gave Drew an RKO. And then The Fiend had noises in the arena as we went to credits. Again, another bloody shitty fucking cliffhanger ending that just don't work Smackdown have been doing them so much better Impact have been doing them so much better any other brand have been doing these cliffhanger endings better Raw just seems to fucking miss the point with them entirely Ugh, I don't, seriously this fucking this show was fucking pure trash yeah, I mean, that, that, that's your goal with a cliffhanger, cliffhanger ending. You're meant to give the audience something to hold on to, to take into next week, to make them actually want to tune in. What yeah. genuinely can you take after tonight into next week? Nothing. Like, SmackDown did it amazing. Before Hell in the Cell, the Roman J segment, and then the cage down came down, and there was a stare down of J on the outside, Roman on the inside. That made me want to see their match at Survivor Series, because I was intrigued to see them get their hands on them. McIntyre going into a hell in the cell and closing the door, and we cut to black. Just makes me think, what, did they just walk straight to the back again? Yeah. Uh, you have to time it very, very specifically in order for this to work. Yeah. The Jey Uso and Roman Reigns stuff, when they're staring down, you just think, oh, when's Jey going to get in there? When's he going to get his hands on Roman? So it makes you want to watch on Sunday. Yeah. When Randy and Drew are doing it and it just fades to black and there's no time to build up that suspense and that want and that desire to see them fight, it doesn't work. And that was two yeah. weeks ago. This was tonight. And they did the same thing tonight. The Fiend, ha, 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 ringing out through the arena. I don't care. I really don't want to see Bray Wyatt with another championship because they're just going to have him lose it in an unceremonious way like they did last time yeah. with Goldberg and then to Roman Reigns. The, the Fiend is a total fucking klutz. They've killed The Fiend. Just end yeah. the gimmick already. I mean, it's not, it's, I bet it won't even be a title feud. I, well, it, it looks like they're probably going to set up a triple threat with Randy and Drew and 
The Fiend at TLC, or possibly at the Rumble. The Miz is probably going to cash in. And then we'll probably have the Miz main event in WrestleMania, which... It, that's whatever. It's just whatever. Meh. Meh. Yeah, I kind of don't want to see this Miz main event at WrestleMania. I, I prefer Morrison, man. Morrison should have that shot. But they've just done, They've never, ever done anything good with Morrison. Ever. Never. He proved he was a star in Impact Wrestling and Lucha Underground. He proved he was a star. And he is a star. He looks like a star and he talks like a star. He carries himself like a star. He has that amazing hair and that amazing physique. What are they not seeing him? But somehow, our truth is allowed television time every week to do with but, bullshit comedy. But Morrison has to be the fucking sidekick f from the stars. And stars so, is in Hollywood, not space. Like, uh, imagine being second fold to the Miz. They also need to get rid of that stupid slow mo entrance. It doesn't look good anymore. Oh, no, you're high. You are high. That entrance is sick. Yeah, but it Always doesn't be. set him up to be a legitimate star. It's unique. Like, who else does something like that? Well, yeah, but if you want to make him serious, make him a badass kick. High flying, kick at, kicking ass wrestler. Like he has been outside of wrestler, outside of WWE. I mean, he still does that stuff. It's just the fact that he's behind Miz's ass for like since he's been back, I mean, so he hasn't had time to showcase it. I he's still it is, doing that. It is factually true that a match that happens in WWE will significantly be less entertaining and less decent than a match outside of WWE. Yeah, because they work the WWE style, which and the is WWE style baby is face, shit. baby face versus heel. The baby face gets beat up on, makes a comeback, gets stopped by the heel who works on him more. And then the baby face makes a comeback and ultimately wins. And that's the style well, for every WWE. Nakamura match. is the prime example. His first NXT match, he worked his style against Sami Zayn, and it was probably the best match that he has ever done in WWE. And then go two years later, he's kicking AJ Styles in the bollocks at Mania. Yeah, what? <laughs> that was weird. Just for a but, short but if period. If you had of time. Nakamura and AJ in New Japan, that match would have been a five star classic. WWE style, it was shit. It's just a Why prime example of WWE with can't bollocks. put on a good match anymore. Oh, yeah. AJ Styles and Nakamura obsessed with each other's bollocks. That was a weird time in wrestling. That was a fucking shit feud. It was. Yeah, but didn't it The Undertaker was. have an obsession with Brock Lesnar's bollocks at one point as well? Yeah, they had an obsession with each other's bollocks. What is with wrestling and obsessing over each other's Vince bollocks? Vince just loves bollocks, I think. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't put it past Vince. And again, the guy does like fart humour, so... Fart humour? Yeah, remember when Natalia started farting on camera? That was all Vince's idea. Oh my god, yeah. Vince finds farts hilarious. Uh, I imagine he would. But yeah, the <laughs> guy hates happen. sneezing. Yeah, he doesn't like sneezing. That's weird. He's a weird guy. He is. I mean, this is the same motherfucker who wanted an incest storyline with his own daughter. Twice. So, yeah, twice. And then with Shane, Shane and Stephanie, yeah. Yeah, I think he's... Uh... He also authorised Triple H to fuck a, court, uh, fuck a mannequin next door to a funeral happening. Somehow that is the second time Katie Vick has come up in this rundown. I don't know why we keep bringing up Katie Vick, but this is just talking about Demented Vince Man. Appropriate name, by the way. Rundown. This show was rundown. Yeah. What would you give this show out of ten? <laughs> out of ten? You have to give it more than a zero. I have to give it more than... So does 0 0.5 count? 0 0.01? Does that you count? You can do 0 0.5. What is... So 0 0.5 is the lowest I can physically go? I would say yeah. Okay, before I give my grade, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Dude, every single week, the WWE throws you a bone. They throw you a bone and we all fetch it. And every single time, it turns out not to be a bone... But a giant fucking boner that fucks us in the ass each and every single goddamn week that we turn this show on. Yep. Every single time. It's like, how many times can you keep going to the same lemonade stand 
that serves you shit lemonade. And we all fall for it each and every single week. But the problem I is if we wish don't, I was an arrested fan. If we don't go to the shit lemonade stand, the shit lemonade stand closes down and affects the rest of the lemonade stands in the town. As wrestling yeah, fans, it's our obligation to watch to make sure the industry stays alive. Like, I, I wish sometimes I wasn't a wrestling fan. I really mm. do, because the pain that they put you through every Monday night, it's, it's just appalling, man. Yeah, and Wednesday it is, is also appalling. not good. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing yeah. to sit down and watch this. Like, Can you honestly say you have a romantic pursuit with a woman? Is one of the first things you're going to admit is you're a wrestling fan? I wouldn't. I'd be, I'm, I'm humiliated and embarrassed by the fact that I'm a wrestling fan sometimes. Mm. No, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't preface that as a wrestling fan. WWE fan. WWE. Wrestling's great. WWE, not so much. Yeah, I about to say. I mean, like wrestling, but to be fair, is my least favourite things to watch. It is. Because they show you your hand show you their hand each and every single week and they have nothing for you they place nothing on the table they do nothing new it's just going through the motions each and every single week with this garbage like, it's the same saying, show. why is it a thing it's boring brand warfare doesn't exist stop trying to force it down our throats for fucking four weeks oh and they're gonna have the invasion segments in a couple of weeks as well That's smackdown comes to war they will. They, they will. This is WWE. I think this shit's great. Vince McMahon probably had a big old smirk on his face throughout this entire show. Probably exactly what he wanted. Survivor Series is going to be shit. And then they wonder why this shit's tanking. Wonder why the company's dying each and every single day. Look at the numbers. Watch the show back. Watch the show back if you didn't watch it. Do you know it. how bad their numbers are? You know AEW, the show you don't like... Oh god. Has double the viewers in England than Raw and SmackDown. Double. Okay, but to be fair, counter argument, WWE is locked behind BT Sports paywall. AEW is on ITV. Yeah, but majority of the people have access to BT Sports. Not as much as ITV. ITV reaches I think it's something like eighty five million. UK homes, BT Sports only in 25,000. Uh, yeah, but don't most phone contracts offer you BT Sports as a package? I mean, well, you, you got to have a phone contract. Yeah, but most people have a phone contract in this country. I mean, my phone contract doesn't support BT, I wish. Jesus. Where'd you get that from? Well, Vodafone do. They always have an entertainment package where you can get BT Sports for six months free. Or two years. Most of them are two years. Well, 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 well there you go. But, but still, ITV is always going to have more viewership than BT Sport and Sky Sports. This is how it is. When something's behind a paywall and something else is free, the free but, things are always going to get... But it also get... does show you that if it was back in the Attitude Era or Ruthless Aggression, people would have paid to watch the WWE and more gone for that. But the fact that people would rather watch AEW on ITV than actually go and check out the biggest wrestling company in the world shows something. I bet most casual fans don't even know what AEW is. You have a point. You have a point, but I still think ITV is always going to get more viewership than BT Sport, no matter what it is. No matter what it is. And, and I'm sure ITV normal programs probably get more ratings than BT Sports football and UFC. And it's a broad statement. I'm not sure if that's true, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, grades of Raw, yeah. If 0 0.5 is the lowest I can go, wanting to go lower and reluctantly, I'm going to give this a 0 0.5, but I don't even think it's worthy of that. Give it a 0 then. If you don't think it's, it's not even watchable, then you give think that. at 0. Zero. Circle. Nada. Zelch. I think I'm going to have to agree with you. This fucking Raw basically felt like an abortion. It's an abortion of the highest proportion. Fuck yes. 
Just do you, do you think this is the worst rot ever, or at least of 2020? It's getting that far. I can't generally think of anything that actually made me want to watch Raw again. Yeah, next week just seems like even more of a drag. There's nothing to look forward to. Like, what am I taking out of Raw tonight into next week? Like I said, fuck all except my dignity and throwing it in the bin. Exactly, I just... Uh, I can't say I was generally impressed. I mean, Smackdown's still going alright. Smackdown is definitely head and shoulders above Raw. Oh, definitely. And Ellie, God bless. I really hope you enjoy Smackdown and enjoy doing your rundown with Tom. You have the better show, my friend. Count yourself lucky. Count yourself lucky. I mean, tomorrow's Impact Wrestling, which I know will be decent because someone got murdered last week. Oh, yeah, the, the murder storyline. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, you'd rather watch this murder story on than watch Raw again, yes? <laughs> it's like choosing between a shit sandwich and a but plate full of piss. But Impact's not meant to be a serious wrestling company, and that's why it's actually good. It's, that, it's a lot more entertaining to watch every week than it is watching Raw. That's why I don't enjoy it, though, because I like serious wrestling. And so far, the only serious wrestling company anymore... Is Ring of Honor and NWA. And NWA is not back yet. Yeah, true. To be fair, Ring of Honor has been shit since like 2017 as well. No, you, no, no. You need to watch Ring of Honor's tournament. Uh, yes, I will enjoy my not so serious wrestling, as clearly that is more my style than the serious star stuff. Doesn't make one or the other better, but we can both agree that Raw is a train wreck and it needs to fucking figure itself out. Fire Bruce Pitchcard immediately. Who? Bruce Pitchcard, you know, Brother Love. Oh, Bruce Pitchcard. He's the executive producer of both Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, that's uh, Bruce Pritchard, I think. I think it's pronounced Pitchcard? Pritchcard? I don't fucking care what his name is. I don't know. Pritchcard should be his name. Basically, they took Heyman off the job because Vince wasn't satisfied, and then this is what we get as the end result. Not satisfied? I'm not satisfied. Wish I had a say. Snickers satisfies, but it does satisfy me when I'm watching fucking Monday Night Raw. Raw doesn't satisfy. Definitely not. Fucking doesn't. I mean, I'm just thankful that I've got two decent wrestling shows in a row this week. In fact, AEW slash NXT. All decent wrestling shows to watch this week. Are you watching Full Gear? I will be watching Full Gear, yes. Decent, decent. And Oh, it's also New Japan in the morning as well. So I'll be watching their uh, their show on Saturday morning. You're going to be live for that? Yes, it'll be. it's 8am. Brilliant. Make sure you subscribe to All Things Wrestling so you'd never ever miss out on any of the New Japan streams that happen at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes, uh, I skip the Road 2 stuff most of the time because it's all just like glorified house shows and half the time I can't be able to get up for it. Yeah, because, but eight Again, o'clock. any of their glorified house shows kick WWE's ass ten, ten times over. And they're not even putting title matches on, but it's just a much better, much more serious show. So I'm surprised you don't watch New Japan. I don't know how you do it. How do you wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning after getting off at 4 o'clock in the morning for Smackdown? How? Years of practice. You're fucking inhuman, you. Honestly. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And I would have had work on the Saturday, but I've uh, obviously due to due to local lockdowns and all the lockdowns in the country. Is your work closed? It will be closing on Thursday as far as I'm aware. Shit, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. It's alright, but I'm getting I'm getting full furlough pay, so I'm not I'm getting full hundred percent pay, so I'm not complaining too much. Decent, decent. It's a good thing. Now my main question is, do anyone else can answer, do you think this lockdown's gonna be extended past December? Oh, yeah, because they're not closing schools. I generally don't think that places like restaurants will be open for Christmas. I think everything will be closed until January like that. 
Well, they're not anyway, are they? Restaurants? Yeah, restaurants are set to open back again the 2nd of December. But they never open on Christmas, at least not around here. Uh, maybe not in your area, but where I live and most places, restaurants are open Christmas Day. Oh, it's mad. It's a weird concept. Shops are closed here as well, past 1pm. Lucky fucker. Fuck it, I'm moving to Newcastle. Because <laughs> I have to work um, Christmas Day every fucking year. You work Christmas Day? Every We do get double pay though, so I'm on like fucking s not nearly £18 an hour. Oh, I should take holiday off. Not allowed to book holiday. Company policy. What? It's, is that not illegal? Nope, it's within, within the contract that we sign. Ah. Uh, well, holidays are. To book a holiday and the fi the thing, you have the manager has to authorise it. They can just not authorise your holiday for that time. They should on Christmas, man. That's bullshit. I know, I know, but that's just how the company operates. And I can't complain because I need my job. Yep. Especially you need your more job. now on this year being shit. But yeah. Yep. Shout out yep. to my company for being alright. But yes, Wednesday I'll figure out everything going on, but Wednesday should be my last shift until potentially next year. Potentially next year, Jesus. We're gonna have fun with all these streams. Two streams a day. Two streams a day. A chill Jesus. stream uh well where I watch a movie, which is the easiest form of... Con I noticed you did a chill stream recently. I wonder where you got the inspiration for that. Who, me? Yeah. Alright, listen. Go back on my channel. Two years ago, chill stream's on there. Bam. Alright, I'll let you off. <laughs> but yes, it's easy content. If anyone's got movie suggestions, leave them below. If anyone's got suggestions of how to destroy money in our raw, would also like to hear them. And yeah, I would like to see take... emoji movie suggestions. No, I'm not watching the movie movie. Oh it's God, worse it's than so Monday Night Raw. Good. It's not. It's so good. It was panned as one of the worst movies in the history of ever. Have you ever watched it? No, but I don't need to watch it. It's <laughs> you terrible. No, yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's blind hatred, sir. <laughs> we don't yes. accept that. Yes, everyone go check out Wrestling Network. I will have his channel uh, channel link in the description. Oh, I'm so flattered. He does um, wrestling news and reviews. Well, not reviews. Terribly. Terribly, by the way. Wrestling news and wrestling live reactions, the same as I do. I mean, most of my viewers are aware of you anyway, so... <laughs> true. True, true. But yeah, that, that was it. That was it for Monday Night Raw. We finally got through it, somehow. Yes, I survived and you died. Oh, damn, yeah. My soul has been crushed. I lost a piece of myself tonight. I Never think the chat is what helps. When you're focusing half on the chat, I think it saves you from noticing half the wrestling. Oh, definitely. But when your chat's dead and you're not as famous as all things wrestling, it doesn't exactly help. You've got more subs than me. Oh, yeah, because that's from the news videos, isn't it? That must be. Well, it's my, I mean, half my subs are from the food reviews. Food reviews? Yeah, I did loads of food reviews. I got an entire playlist based around them. I'm going to have to watch some food reviews. There's literally, some of them got like nearly 3,000 views. 3,000 views? What'd you review? Fucking bar of gold? No, some shitty pasta thing. <laughs> I want to review Some of them pasta. literally catch on fire and get, get a decent amount of views. Fuck, I'm going to start doing that. Stay. Hey. What? No. what? My Sorry. reviews. Oh, Alright. I'm going to stop reviewing drink then instead. I do Fuck drinks as well. Food and Tell drinks. Me Fuck off then. <laughs> <laughs> do, would you eat a microwavable doner kebab? A microwave doner kebab? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I did. Twice. Was it nice? Three times. No, was it, it was not. It was fucking yeah. shit. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> this is the kind of thing you have to eat. Why? Because the people need to know how bad it is. Do they just not want to know about quavers? Nah, sorry, everyone knows about quavers. Unless you don't. Seriously. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm going shopping. I need to. I need to stuff up for the month lockdown. So, I just going out tomorrow and buying as much stuff as I can on lockdown. If you've never had quavers, 
go to Asda or Tesco or Sainsbury's or Morrison's or fucking, I don't know, Aldi or whatever you've got near you. Get some Quavers, yeah? Yeah. The Quavers. Just Trust don't me. go to Aldi because it won't have brand name Quavers. It must be Walker's Quavers. Do not get the cheap variety. You have to have the real ones. Oh, what are they called? Fucking cheese curls, I think. The cheese oh. curls are nice, but they're not a patch on Quavers. Minging. They are minging. Absolutely minging. Now, if you also get a chance, try prawn shells. They're basically cheap skips, but they kick skips ass three times over fucking Wednesday. Uh, they either do them in co-op or Tesco, as they were in brand prawn shells, and they are fucking amazing. I could I eat an entire bag you, every yeah. time I open them. I can agree with you, though. This is not about raw anymore, is it? This is about English snacks. <laughs> yeah. This has come become more like a podcast than a fucking review. Sorry, Spaghetti. I know you're American. Yeah, sorry, dude. Um, Hershey <laughs> bars. They're not bad. Reese's Pieces. Very good. Not a peanut butter fan. You're mental. Then I just I don't like it that much. I don't like the nutty taste. I've never liked the taste of nuts. <laughs> God, that can be taken out of context. <laughs> I mean, at least you said you didn't like the taste of them. Exactly. Sorry, yeah. Ellie. No homo. <laughs> yeah, like anyone sat through 46 minutes of this. This is 46 minutes, is it? Yep. Oh, I apologise. Oh, well, it's going up, and then if people watch it, they watch it. If they don't, they don't. Please don't call the police. Get the popo on the line. Don't get mad. I'm sorry. Raw murdered my freaking innocence. Yep, Raw murdered my terrible wrestling virginity. You watched the Smackdown karaoke segment. I'm sure that already died. Smackdown karaoke? Ah, mate. Fucking greatest segment ever. Smackdown karaoke was. Yeah, if there was never any of the segments in wrestling ever. Oh, <laughs> Fair enough. I can't even argue. Can't pretend to like that. No, that was trash. Well, thank you for watching this review. Check out uh, Wrestling Network, and we shall catch you all later. Peace.